Hello, welcome to your academy. At your academy, we have been dealing with the general prologue to the Canterbury Tales by Geoffrey Chaucer. Uh, so far, we have dealt with the introduction to the general prologue. We have dealt with the portrait of the knight and the portrait of the squire. In today's lecture, we will deal with the portrait of the yeoman. Now, if you want to watch any of the lectures on any of the portrait from the general prologue, you can check out this link. It will take you to the playlist section of the general prologue. Furthermore, we advise, we recommend that when you visit your academy, do visit the home page of your academy, go to the playlist section and in playlist sections, you will find lectures in better order and there are many lectures on English literature which would be beneficial for you. So do visit the home page of your academy. Now coming to the today's lecture, which is on yeoman. Yeoman is a personal servant, an assistant, and in medieval times, he would be the assistant of some influential personality, some influential person or a person of high degree or status in the society. Here in general prologue, the yeoman with whom we would deal with would be the servant either of the knight or of the squire. Now, that is uh, a bit of confusion that we have in the portrait of the yeoman. It's not clear to us that whose uh, servant the yeoman is, whether he is the servant of the squire or he is the servant of the knight. And one of the reasons for that is when we go with the available sequence of the portraits in the general prologue, uh, yeoman comes after the portrait of the squire. So in this sequence, uh, we would consider him to be the uh, servant of the squire. But we were told that the portrait of the yeoman was written before the portrait of the squire. If we go with that sequence, then after knight we will have yeoman. Now in this regard, yeoman would be the servant of knight. Now why am I saying these things? Because there is a pronoun that uh, Geoffrey Chaucer uses at the very beginning of the yeoman's portrait when he uses the word he. A yeoman had he. Now this he, their third person pronoun, either refers to squire or it refers to knight. Going with the present sequence of the uh, prologue, we would say that he was the servant of the squire. So let's take up the portrait of the yeoman and find out that how did he appear to Geoffrey Chaucer. A yeoman had he, nor more servants, no, at that time, for he chose to travel so. Had he, this is what I was telling you, this he, in today's context, would refer to the squire, or, you know, if you go with that initial order of writing, when Geoffrey Chaucer wrote, he wrote this portrait of the yeoman after the knight. In that case, he would refer to knight. But whatever be the case, he is related to the knight and the family uh, of the knight. So either of the squire or of the knight. So he had a, a servant with him, a personal servant, a yeoman with him. Not many servants had he at that time, at which time? At the time when they were going for the pilgrimage to the Canterbury. So he chose to travel. So this yeoman is traveling with the knight and the squire or with the squire for that matter. He is not traveling or going to the pilgrimage out of his own will, but since his master is going to the Canterbury, so he thought it fit to go with them on this pilgrimage. And he was clad in coat and hood of green, a chef of peacock, arrows bright and keen. Under his belt he bore right carefully. Well could he keep his tackle yeomanly. Now these are the four verses that I have read on go. At the very beginning he gives the description of the attire before telling us something else about the yeoman. He was clad in the coat and hood of green. Now the color of his clothes was green and he was also carrying a chef of the peacock which was very keen, very sharp and this keen, this sharp chef of the peacock he would keep very tightly under his belt and he was a very efficient and clever yeoman, a clever servant. He could tackle his services or, or you know, do his duties quite well. Now, these are few things that Geoffrey Chaucer would tell us about yeoman. Now, look at, 
look at the things that he is telling us and look at the shift from the knight and uh, the squire and the yeoman and look at the habits are you know uh, hobbies of this yeoman you know he loves to keep the chef of a peacock which is childish for that matter perhaps when we were young children we used to keep the chef of peacock with us inside a notebook yeoman has got this habit and he keeps you know this chef of peacock with him and he keeps that very carefully under his belt his arrows had no draggled feather slow and in his hand he bore a mighty bow you now he was carrying arrows also but those arrows were not going to be very effective were not going to be were not of the best uh, you know order or form or quality and he was also carrying a huge bow with him now this is important because it would be in a great contrast to his masters who are the masters of yeoman the knight and the squire both are the knights both have fought in the war now the weapons that the knight and the squire would carry would obviously be of good quality the yeoman who is the servant of the squire or the knight also carries uh, a bow and the arrows but his bows and arrows would be like you know showing to the people that i being a servant of the knight and are the servant of the squire do carry these weapons with him but they did not seem to be of a good quality or order so therefore he uses the word mighty bow with it and this mighty is a kind of an understatement that jeffrey chaucer is making here a cropped head had he and a sun browned face a wooden craft knew he all the useful ways now his personal appearance now there is one thing that you will find in the prologue when you will deal with prologue now mostly the, those people who are of lower degree are of low status whether it be uh, the yeoman whether it be the cook or whether it be the concluding uh, portraits like miller reeve mensipal uh, and others you know their physical appearance is not uh good or is not depicted as good by jeffrey chaucer look at him he has a cropped head which means that he does not have too much of an hair on his head and he has a sun burned face now this sun browned face would be because he is a servant so he does not have all those luxuries which perhaps his master enjoys so he may be struggling toiling hard under the sun and having a sun burned face of a servant is not an unrealistic statement that jeffrey chaucer is making and besides this he knew quite a number of useful ways of utilizing the wood now since he was a servant uh, a yeoman so he has to know the skills which are related to field which are related to forest which are related to the wood so he knew quite a good deal about the wooden craft upon his arm he bore a bracer gay and on one side a sword and buckler ye on his arm he wore a bracer gay you know what is this bracer gay this is an image of the bracer gay because you know i am showing these images because it gives you an you know, exact idea that what he is putting on now this bracer gay, gay was an arm protection which was used in ancient times by the by the by the warriors particularly who would fight with the sword in the battle so this would protect them from any attack of the enemy so he is putting that also on his arm now see he does not use that but since he is the servant of the knight and the squire so he is carrying almost all those things which the knight and the squire would carry with himself and he is also carrying a sword and a buckler now this is an image of the buckler it is a small shield you know again which was an important part of the warriors in the ancient times to protect themselves against the against the arrows and against the sword so he is carrying all those weapons all those things which his his masters are carrying and they are his personal because you know uh, a, a, a knight won't be carrying all these things uh, are you know carrying his weapons and giving his weapons to the personal servant does not seems does not seem as a you know viable option and at the other side a dagger bright well sheathed and sharp as spear point in the light 
Now he was carrying also a dagger with him and this dagger was very sharp, sheathed, which means that it was not blunt. It was, you know, as sharp as is the point of the spear. And breast a Christopher of silver sheen, he bore a horn in baldric all of green. Now, uh, there is the word Christopher that he has used. This Christopher is a saint and he is considered to be the saint of the field or saint of the forests or saint of the foresters. So, he is carrying some, you know, uh, relic of this uh, Christopher or something given to him, uh, to him by the Christopher. So, he is wearing that which could be in the form of a bracelet, which could be in any form. So, he is carrying that with him and he is wearing that, uh, you know, on, in, his, in his throat at the chest. Now, he was also wearing a baldric horn in baldric, which, which is a belt, which is a kind of a belt. Now, even that was green. So, Mostly the word green has been repeated a second time. It was even used earlier for his hood and for his coat and now for his belt is also of the color green. So there is a lot of focus on the word green in the portrait of uh, you know the squad uh, the the yeoman also one of the reasons that we can find out for his love for the greenery is because even his master that is squire has a great love for the greenery so he may be inspired or influenced by the outlook of his of his master the squire so he is also in love with the green a forester he truly was i guess that is the last information that he tells us that he must have been a forester now this forester would not mean the forester of our times that we have but you know this forester would probably refer to a person who works more in the forests or with the woods are in the villages because earlier also there was a reference that he knew a lot of useful ways of utilizing the woods. So that could be that he was a person who came from village or lived in the forest within the trees and uh, you know uh, knew the uh, those arts of utilizing wood in a better way. That was the portrait of the human and that is all we have at your academy for today. We dealt with the portrait of the human. Uh, thank you for watching and you can continue watching the lectures on general prologue. You can click here to watch the next lecture which would be on the prioress nun. You can click here to go to the playlist section of the, uh, of the general prologue. You can click there at the top to subscribe your academy. Don't forget to share, like and comment on the videos of the your academy. For more interesting stuff, keep watching your academy.